Welcome to the Thing Stretch. My name is Alex Schneider, along with my good friend and co-host Paul Eppy. Once again, uh, like I said on Wednesday, we're kind of changing things up. Wednesday is going to be league news. Sunday we're going to be strictly Cardinal news, Cardinal information. Um, that way, if you don't like the league news, you can go watch that separately. Um, and if you like just the Cardinal news, you can come watch this separately. Also, real quick, we're still going to try and have Jake on on Wednesday. So if that happens. We'll touch on Little League news, but then we're going to do a lot of just talking with Jake and getting his opinion on stuff that's going on. Um, so then probably the either that Sunday or we'll just skip League news altogether, or that Sunday we'll touch on a little bit more, and then we'll move into Cardinal news. Um, hopefully we can have him on soon. Um, yeah, you know, I was uh, he was supposed to be on last week, but uh, he's he's going out of town for, for a baseball tournament, so... Uh, you know, we uh, we are we we've been close to having him on, but his schedule just hasn't quite worked out. But pretty soon here, we're we're hoping that he'll be able to join us. Yep, and that's and that's understandable. I mean, like I said, we're me and you're in college. I don't know how old Jake is, but I'm sure he's got his he's obviously got his own life to live. Doesn't need to be making time for our little show here. No. But moving on straight into Cardinal news, uh, real quick. Uh, I'm going to do the big news of the day just because I was hoping this this would happen. Not the way that it did happen. I was hoping it would just come with voting. But Matt Carpenter goes down with an oblique strain. Uh, I actually watched it. I don't know if you watched it, but I got, I actually watched him when he injured it. I did not. I mean, I saw the replay of it, and, and I, it didn't look like he did anything, but obviously something got tweaked. Yeah, he like did a check swing and then grabbed his side and – yeah, I went down to the trainer's office, and then Colt Wong is in the, going to end up starting a lot of games at second base for us, uh, either that or Jed Jerko. But with that injury, being he is the all-star from the Cardinals that was there, Aledemus Diaz is taking his spot on the roster. Uh, congrats to him. I know he didn't want it this way, but nonetheless, it is still an all-star game. Matt Carpenter will be okay. Hopefully after that break, he'll be fine. Um, so... Like we predicted, we wanted him in, we got him in, just mm-hmm. not the right, right way that we really wanted him in. Right, you know, it's it's kind of sad that it happened that it had to happen this way. You're you, you are right, um, but he still is a deserving All Star nonetheless. Um, it's good to see him get some national attention. Hopefully, he can play in the game and therefore get more national attention and draw more people to watch him and get more people to understand how good he's been playing this season. Um, but you know, as for the injury to Carpenter. Gosh, that is a killer. Um, you know, he's he's your leadoff man. Yeah, he's a guy who gets on base. He sets the tone, um, and we don't know how long he's out for. Yeah, I mean, with oblique strain, depending on what the 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 like how severe it is, uh, I would say fifteen day DL. He'll probably do. He won't have probably any rehab starts, I wouldn't think, with a 15-day DL bleaching. But he'll be working on it. Probably took a couple of days off from baseball activities. We'll be moving on to uh, back to baseball, hopefully after the All-Star break. Um, so uh, I know I touched on a little bit. Brandon Moss has also gone down to the DL. Uh, I don't remember what his thing was. I thought it was a foot problem, left ankle maybe. Brandon Moss, I have the whole injury list right here. Brandon Moss has a – um, left ankle sprain, and Got right. also on the 15 day DL. And you know it's kind of funny because I'm on MLB.com and in what they have, Alex, you've seen this, um, but they have like this injury report for every team, and then you click on whatever team you want, and you and you click on the Cardinals, and this list is just getting longer by the day. Um, when you start having to scroll through the players. You, you know it's getting pretty bad that they can't even fit on the screen without scrolling down. Um, no, I mean it's it's getting a little ridiculous. Um, Trevor Rosendahl just got put down. Uh, I'm not. I mean he just got hurt. Um, Kevin Segrist is hurt. Uh, Matt Holliday's hurt. Not really sure what's wrong with him. Um, but the list just goes on and on and on. Um, it should be fair. Not that there's any really a great time to get hurt. Not that getting hurt at a certain point is better than others. But in a long season like this with the All-Star game just this co- upcoming week, mm-hmm. there's really not a better time to get hurt if right. it were to happen. Um, so hopefully those guys can kind of rehab what they got to get done and then make it back to the club and mm-hmm. hopefully have a better second half than what we did the first half. That might be one of the good things about not having so many guys on the All-Star team is 
nobody has to worry about playing in a game or traveling. They can just sit, relax, get healthy. Um, but, and that's all they have to do. You know, you don't have guys like Waka and Rosenthal and um, Adams or Peralta or uh, Waka or whoever um, playing in the All-Star game. And that's fine because they can get healthy and they're more – they're more important to the Cardinals than they are to the National League. Um, so just get healthy, people. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And speaking on that, the Cardinals lost the first game of the series to the Brewers and won the second game to the, to the Brewers. Uh, first game, I believe, was a uh, bullpen loss. I believe. That, yeah, and I bet you can I, – I, I bet you can guess of who got the loss in that game. Rosenthal? Trevor Rosenthal. Man, I don't, I don't really know what to do about him. It seems like we've had, you know, we had good years. We had, we had relievers that have had one good, really, really good year, and then the next year are complete trash. Uh, Boggs, you do, one, yeah, you do raise a very good point in the in the sense that we we have good relievers for one year, and then after that, it's a toss up. Yeah, I mean, a couple of years ago, Mitchell Boggs was mm-hmm. a stud in the eighth inning, well, a complete beast. Oh, yeah, he was awesome. And and then the next year was god-awful, just terrible. Like, Do you remember uh, Edward Mujica? Yeah, I loved him. Same thing with him. Mm-hmm. I loved Mujica. Like, I thought he was really good. i tell you what, and the funny thing is, is the ones that could throw a little funny or uh, were older are usually the ones that are staying at, like Choke. Choke was really mm-hmm. good for the seasons we had him. He didn't have any yep. downfalls. Uh, Pat Neshek was really Pat good. Pat Neshek, yeah. I actually thought that the Cardinals should have kept Pat, Pat Neshek after last offseason. I did, too. Um, I, I, thought, was, uh, I was a bit disappointed that they didn't keep him because he was really, really good. Yeah, really good. And But it seems like all these young kids are coming up and then something's going wrong. The only one that's really stayed consistent is Seth Manus, and – I don't know what he's what he's doing and differently even, than the other guys. But. Even he's having a sort of down year because he got sent down to Memphis too. Yeah, I mean, no, he didn't get sent down. Didn't he get hurt? No, he got hurt, and that well, he got I, hurt I, and had a I, rehab I, in Memphis. I was, maybe you're right, but I I, I could have sworn he was sent down. I'm probably thinking of Kevin Segrist or Grichik or or um, Wong or something. I don't know. I mean, I just feel like. He he definitely played for Memphis, whether it was rehab or um, just the fact that he got sent down. I I think you're right. I believe you actually are right with the rehab. Now that I think of it. Okay. Um, well, if, are you gonna Are you looking that up? Is that what you're doing right now? Or uh, I can. Yeah. Um, okay. We can well, continue you, on here, then um, I will pull that up. All right. That's right. Uh, just to continue on, uh, like I said, Car. Cardinals open loss on Friday, a win yesterday. Um, Gritchick is also back up at the big club and actually hit a home run the other day. He's hitting pretty well, yeah, absolutely. So he's come up. I think he's a little bit more comfortable now. Um, in the box, he's not crazy. Um, so uh, glad to see he's back. Uh, I mean, it's just, man, he's just one of those talents or whatever that you hoped would would be really good. So hopefully they've changed that up and he's going to be a consistent player. Um, also with other injuries going on, the Cardinals right now are carrying three catchers. Michael McHenry was called up as well with the Carpenter on the DL. Um, so the Cardinals are carrying three catchers. This is what goes to show when you have a good backup catcher, you keep him. Yep. We could have had Fryer and been just fine. Okie dokie. And they let him go. Yep. Um, I mean, hind, hindsight's also twenty twenty. I, to be fair, but no, I I completely agree with you. Um, by the way, Manus, it was a rehab stint. I was I was wrong, and I recant my statement. Uh, it was a it, he was pitching for Memphis via rehab, and uh, and he was doing all that. But um, no, yeah, I, I I agree with you about Eric Fryer, and it kind of hurts knowing that. You know, he, he signs with Pittsburgh, great, good for him. But then he comes back to burn us, uh, you know, less than a week later. Um, that That's kind of the crappy part. Um, but, you know, that's just baseball, and baseball's a weird sport. But, yeah, the Cardinals should have kept him. Uh, I'd be willing to guess that the front office thinks that as well. 
Yeah, um, and that just goes to show you, I mean, there's, you know, I believe that Eric Fryer is kind of a journeyman within the league. I think he's been on a couple of different teams, but nothing too much major in the major leagues, the right. upper level. Um, but, that, I mean, that just goes to show you, you know, he's probably been down in AAA, you know, for most of his career, and it has come up and has done great things for every, uh, for our ball club, for Pittsburgh's ball club. That just goes to show you how much talent's actually in the minor leagues and how, like how rich things can get real quick. I mean, right. You know, major the and top look, level you get is really good. Look at Jeremy Hazelbaker too. I mean, you want to talk about a journeyman? He's been. It's, I don't even know the amount of teams he's been on, but he's been on a ton of teams, and um, he finally gets his chance with the Cardinals. And for the first couple weeks of the season, he was the best player. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean that just goes to show. Like you know, you see major league games, you're like, oh, why they do this? Why do that? And it's. You understand how good they really are when these guys come up from AAA and look astoundingly great, and you're like, "Oh my god, you know they're really good." You never heard of them, all this kind of stuff. Well, when the guys that are playing the majors now, when they came up, you'd never heard of them, exactly. and they started I mean, they get, playing really well. And then now it's getting to the point where you see them every single game, so you you kind of expect you know what to expect. I, I and I think Matt Carpenter is is a great example of that. Back when he was drafted, and I think oh nine, and he started playing in like 2010, 2011. Um, 2012, you're like, Matt Carpenter, who's this guy? I mean, who knows what he's going to be like? And he turns out being an all-star and the Cardinals' best player, in my opinion. Yeah, I think he broke a couple state mutual records as well, like with the ball club, I think. Right. I, believe. I, I believe you are right, yeah. Um, so, I mean, like, like he said, baseball is kind of a funny sport. It works in different ways, good, bad indifferent whatever and it doesn't pick a side it affects both sides evenly uh just because the you know the pirates won a bullpen game what wasn't it five or four six to four something like yeah. that and then the next game the cardinals won eight to one i mean that's just how the game works i mean um you know i just i just hope the cardinals this next half of the season can kind of pull it together and start things off with a good good streak and like you said, this month, the past month, kind of showed what team they were going to be. And mm -hmm. to be fair, they actually played played pretty well. The end kind of was a bad little stretch there to end this the series with losing three or four to the Pirates. Wasn't it three or four? Three or four? Three or, three or four at home too, which is kind yeah. of the which is kind of the kicker. I mean, yeah, I mean the Pirates are good. You know, it's we've been playing pretty evenly with them the past couple of seasons. Uh, but you don't want to lose three or four to them at home. That's kind of rotten. Yeah, I mean, uh, and like I said, I think with that, the Cardinals needed to sweep the series in the Milwaukee to kind of erase that one and move on to something else. They didn't sweep the first game. Bullpen blew that one. Uh, they came to the next game ready to play, put up a lot of runs, and won that game. They have to – I think that they have to win this next game, go into the All-Star game with I a agree. win yep. and start the next – start the next series off with another win and then keep it going. I mean, Cubs have come back to the pack. Cardinals didn't catch them. Speaking of the Cubs, I just want to throw out one stat out there that I saw today. I was looking at the standings. Uh, the Cardinals are seven back. The Pirates are, are, are six and a half back of the Cubs. The Cubs are one and nine in the last 10. And I think like 15 and 12, or uh, they've lost 15 of 20. That's not good. That That's that. Those are the types of numbers that that we would see with the Cubs team that a couple years ago who sucked. Um, the Cubs are falling back down to earth. I'm not going to say it's going to last the entire second half of the season. They're going to probably pick it up here again soon. Um, but now is the chance for both the Cardinals and the Pirates. If the Cardinals can just rattle off some wins, you know, get 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 a winning streak going. I'm not saying you have to pull a Cleveland Indians and win 14 straight, although that would be nice. Um, just w just win some series, get a, get a five six seven game winning streak, and guess what? You're right back in the race. Exactly. I mean, you you hit it spot on. I mean, it's not. I'm not looking. For, we don't have to have pretty wins. Ugly wins are the same. You know, the score, the, the, the your record doesn't say if it's an ugly win or an, it's a good, uh, a beautiful win. I mean, just, just more runs. My high school coach always. I mean, to be fair. I don't know. He, he kind of coached a little different than what I would have expected, but he always said the funniest thing. He goes, you know, after the game, we get in the huddle in the off 
so we kind of talked about the game, and he goes, we won because we scored more runs. He's like, I told you before the game started, the team that scored more runs is going to win. And you're kind of like, well, duh. But then when, <laughs> you start, when you watch the Cardinals play, you're kind of, you kind of understand what he's trying to mean. Like, yeah, obviously the team scores more runs is going to win, but you have to score those runs in order to win. And the Cardinals yeah. for a while weren't scoring any runs. Like, you can't win a game with just your defense. Like, if you score no runs but play – Gold glove defense all around diamond. You still lose. You still lose. Yeah, you still have zero runs. Congratulations. Um, you have to score runs. I'm not saying go for the long ball. You know, play some small ball. Cole Long laid down a bunt the other day. It was gorgeous. It was a great bunt mm-hmm. and got on base. Like if you have to play that kind of small ball, play that kind of small ball. Get on base and then let your big guys like Piscotti come in, driving those runs. Diaz driving those runs. Um, I mean, got to score runs. The team scores the most runs wins. Well, yeah, so no, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna argue with that, with that philosophy because the Cardinals could probably use some of that right now. Exactly. Um, and, I mean, let, and that's another thing. I mean, if you, you still play baseball, listen to your coaches. And yeah, sometimes they're gonna tell you some things that's kind of a little funky. Like I looked at him like he was an idiot for a long time, and then watching the Cardinals now, you know, it's true. They have to score runs, and right now they're going on, they're doing that whole thing again where they're going on little hot streaks. Granted, they lost the one. They had four runs. A yep. lot of times, that will win you a ball game. Cardinals only needed two runs yesterday, and they would have won, but they scored eight. Yep. I, I mean, you have to have the mentality of scoring every inning, scoring multiple runs, you know, scoring till the last out is recorded. That's basically what you have to do, and the Cardinals need to take that philosophy going into the second half. I Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm just going to straight up second that. I don't have really much to add. Um, but – I think part of that too is is holding the other team to no runs, um, aka pitching, and the Cardinals pitching. While it's gotten better since the season started when it was terrible, uh, it's still not great. Uh, and and I'll touch on this in, in the first half review here soon, uh, podcast that we'll see during the All Star break. But um, the Cardinals, you know, I we didn't think that their pitching would be this bad, but. Um, at the same time, I I think we expected too much and in, in, in thinking that they would repeat the performance they did last last season, and I'll get into that. Um, but as we've been saying all season, it's just a matter of putting it all together. You, you can you name me a series except for maybe the one where they swept at Pittsburgh, that they you know just great pitching, great offense, and great defense, and great bullpen. Uh, well, they slept Atlanta the first, the second series of the season. Okay, but that's Atlanta. <laughs> it doesn't matter, Paul. They're a major league ball club. You said name a series. I okay, well then I I will give you that, but I would like to see something against a a a above average or at least a five hundred team. Didn't uh, they win two of three against the Cubs a couple weeks ago? They did. Yeah, you're right. I mean, and and granted, like I said, when we when he says, "Oh, it's Atlanta." I'm not taking nothing away from Atlanta. They have some good players on that ball club, but in all together, they're a really bad team. And yep. the Cardinals, like we stated, the Cardinals have to beat up on those bad teams in order to stay in this race. There's a lot of bad teams in the overall league. That's why mm-hmm. only what, what? How many? How many people get in? Five from each league. Uh, if you do you want to count that wild card game or not? Yeah, just count that. I count that as. Yeah, so far. Kind of playoffs. Okay, so you get five, five to four team, five teams get in after a wild card four. So you're really only looking at ten to eight teams getting in. So all those other ball clubs technically are bad because they didn't make it in. So you have all those other ball clubs. I would say at least fifteen ball play bad. At least fifteen, sure. and, and you sure. have to be you have you have to beat up on them. And that's what the Cardinals so far have been doing. And what they need to show is that they can beat up on good ball clubs. They swept AKA the Pirates. They the Pirates, right. Exactly. They swept the Pirates a couple weeks ago. Pirates come into town this time, and we're thinking, hey, you know, let's, you know, I'm not looking for a sweep. It's a four-game series. Yep. Take two, at least, at least split it. Get two yep. to four out of it, two out of yep. four out of it, and then let's move on. Onto the end of the season on, or in the half season on a either a, a series win or a sweep, whatever you want to call it. And – We'll be okay, and then the Cardinals yep. couldn't get that done. That I mean, and granted, this is go ahead. No, I was gonna say, granted, they did take two or three from the Cubs, but like you said, the Cubs are kind of coming down to earth. They're going on a little yep. bit of a cold streak. I don't know. 
I don't think that that's because they're they're getting worse. I think no, it's no, no, because no, no. they've been going so hard for so long that they're wearing down. They're losing that energy. I think. And yep. I, 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 I mean, just, I, and after that All Star break, they'll be back to normal. I agree. Uh, I I think that they will pick it up. It's just the fact that well, for, first of all, it's a long season. You're gonna have some losing streaks. Granted, this is a pretty long losing streak, um, but uh, th- th- that's to be expected almost in the game of baseball. That's why, that's why there's 162 games. You, you can't, you know, win win them all, obviously. Um, but yeah, no, they're gonna pick it up, and this is a good segue because I, I I have the Cardinals schedule pulled up here, and I'm just gonna look ahead here. Uh, through, through the month of July, um, and the Cardinals, the, 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 they play playoff contending teams, and here's their schedule. They come back from the All-Star break and play three at home against the Miami Marlins, who are in the thick of the wild card race right now. Um, they actually might have a wild card spot. I got to check the standings as well. Uh, and then they uh, play four against the Padres, and that's the weakest part of their schedule in July uh, at home. Then they play three against the Dodgers at home. Uh, f- three at the Mets and four at the Marlins. So, with the exception of the Padres, you're playing playoff, possibly playoff teams in the month of July. Um, and like I said last month with June about how they all played those playoff teams, uh, it's sort of the same thing. Is that we're going to see what the Cardinals are made of? It, at least a little bit, I think. Because um, the Marlins, I'm looking at right now, they're only one game back of the second wild card spot. Um, and then the Dodgers have the top wild card spot, and the Mets have the second wild card spot. So we're essentially playing the one, two, three wild card teams as it stands right now. Um, Which so, is a good way to make up some ground to get a wild card. If you they, guys don't, exactly right. if you guys don't know Cardinal history, Cardinals have made good. Have when they win wild cards, they play really good. They've had yeah. a lot of success from the wild card. So just because playing that one game playoff game, and you're like, oh no. Ma, 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 ma. Go into it when they if they get it that you have to go into it confident. They've done really good things out of the wild card. I feel no shame in the Cardinals if they make a wild card spot because they're no. probably not going to catch the Cubs. It'll be really hard for them. I hope that they do. I hope they start playing better. I just don't know if catching the Cubs is a strong possibility this season. Um, really good ball club. Pirates are starting to get better. Marlins, I'm fi- I'm glad to see the Marlins actually playing really well. I like a, the Marlins. It's about time, man. It's about time. Yeah, I mean, I like I I like the Marlins. A lot of people hate Andre Carlos Stanton because out of nowhere he started bombs. You can't ask talent. He's really good. Oh no, yeah. I mean, so, um, but other than that, Paul, that's all I have for today. Yeah, that, that's all I have too. Um, you know, like I've been saying, we're going to do this Cardinal thing on, on Sundays. It'll be posted on Sunday nights um, or, or, or uh, Monday mornings, depending on when we are a- able to record. In this case, it'll be Sunday night. Um, yeah, so we're just going to you know look at w- what the Cardinals have been doing the last week, sort of look ahead to, to what their schedule is and the teams they're facing that next week. Um, I'm not sure. You know, Alex, we may not do a podcast next week because it's the All-Star break and there's nothing to, to really um, – reflect on the Cardinals. Um, yeah, um, but like you touched on a little bit in this, uh, with the All-Star break, we are planning on coming out with some videos. Um, exactly. We're going to touch on predictions that we made in the start of the season to see where we're at on those. Uh, we're going to kind of give, maybe like the major awards, we're kind of going to give the half-season awards to some players. Uh, yep. We won't touch on all of them, you know, like some of them really, you know, I'm not going to go around to each position and name a gold glove. I might mention a gold glover that I think deserves it. Um you know, I'm not going to name Silver Sluggers or nothing, but like MVPs of both leagues, uh, you know, stuff like that. You know, if someone pokes out at us and, you know, maybe like Cy Young Awards, you know, stuff like that. So watch out for that. That'll be really fun. Probably a little controversy in me and Paul's picks on that one. Um, <laughs> but uh, other than other than that, uh, the last thing for me is the All-Star game is just – it's tomorrow and – I haven't seen that bracket. Go look at it. It's gonna be really fun to watch. I can't wait. Uh, the All Star Game is gonna be really fun. A lot of people have yep. either been hurt or have uh, like Madison Bumgarner is starting today, so he won't be able to play. 
Um, so people have taken his spot. Some people very worthy. Other people kind of shaky. Uh, we'll probably touch on that a little bit. But other than that, Paul, that's it for me. That's all I have as well. Um, yeah, you know, for uh, for Alex Schneider, my name is Paul Epi. Uh, Alex, good to talk with you once again. It was fun. Um, and this week's content is going to be a good one. So uh, for sure, keep your uh, keep your ears open for that. Um, we will uh, talk to you guys this week. Uh, this is the 11th inning stretch, the Cardinals Week in Review.